Hello friends. Um, today again, I'm back to discuss a new way of exploiting um, Windows operating systems with the applications that are installed on them. Um, this section is going to focus on something called a structured exception handling. What is structured exception handling? Um, in Windows, basically, um, the way that an application handles its um, exit code or termination code is defined in two different ways. One way is the normal um, workflow of a program where basically you open up an application, it does its intended functionality, and after that you can close the application by using a cross or a quit button, and that actually calls a regular workflow of exit functionality and that exits. However, there are certain cases when an application might perform an exception um, and as a result, um, you know, we'll go into an exception handler. That's what is basically a structured exception handler. In Windows, basically, a structured exception handler uh, is sort of a, a linked list uh, of structures that the application, um, you know, has created for handling exceptions. So one example of an exception handler could be uh, handling integer overflows or handling um, you know divide by zero exception an application can write a try and a catch block in cc plus uh, plus that allows basically um, the application to handle the exceptions gracefully uh, windows basically maintains a structure for these exceptions it basically creates a linked list where uh, the first part of the linked list or the structure contains uh, the next structured exception handlers pointer and the second part of that structure uh, or the data structure would contain actually the address of the exception handler. So uh, whenever an application hits an exception, it can basically you know, traverse this link list to figure out which exception handler it should execute. Um, Windows always provides its own operating system exception handler, which is the classic Windows um, pop-up that we see um, called Dr. Watson. Um, that basically indicates that the application has been terminated, um, unfortunately, in a, not in a graceful manner. So, um, so uh, structured exception handling, um, you know, exploit was created to sort of handle or deal with scenarios where you do not directly control um, the EIP. However, you are able to overwrite uh, a structured exception handler uh, rather than actually overwriting the EIP. And as a result, when the application crashes, it goes into an exception as opposed to directly terminating. And when it goes to that exception, if you control the exception handler, the second part of the data structure that I was talking about earlier, uh, you can basically um, execute again your shell code. Uh, again, this is an example of stack overflow system where the structure exceptions are usually uh, oriented on the stack, at least in the Windows XP and 7 systems that I've seen so far. Uh, so basically, that way uh, you can overflow a buffer in, in the application stack and um, you know overwrite this structure exception handler. So again, um, the example in this case is of RM downloader application. Uh, I'm going to use this application which suffers from a structured exception overflow um, after providing it with an M3U file which has basically uh, 42,000 uh, 92 A's um, followed by uh, a 1,372 B's uh, followed by basically uh, the example of structured exception handling. Now, however, to exploit the structured exception handling, uh, Microsoft devised sort of a prevention mechanism where it defined that your structured exception handlers can only belong uh, to a certain set of addresses. So basically, it creates a table at the compiled time. Uh, and defines that these are the specific addresses of structured exceptions. Any address outside that is uh, not considered to be uh, a valid address. It calls it SEH, which is software depth, in a way to prevent stack overflows uh, using the structured exception handler. However, um, every DLL that is loaded into your memory or, or for that specific application needs to be compiled with this SEH or structured exception handling. If one of the DLLs is not actually compiled with that specific flag being set on, um, then you can use addresses from that memory to sort of you know jump to your shell code um, and then execute your instructions. So in this case, usually what the whole idea is, um, is that when you try to explore the structured exception handling, uh, 
whenever the application jumps to the structure exception handler data structure, which is in this case a data structure like this, where the first part is going to be technically the next uh, pointer to the next structured exception handler, and the second part is actually the memory address of the exception handling code. However, uh, when it jumps to the specific data structure, uh, there is a sort of a, uh, a structure created on the stack that uh, is basically in the form of uh, uh, the address memory laid out in a way that allows you, if you pop twice from the stack, uh, it basically points to the address of this specific instruction. Um, so basically, in this case, what we're going to try to do is, you know, do pop twice from the stack uh, and then return back to, to basically the specific address. Uh, in this case, this is basically a small instruction which says jump six bytes. And the reason you want to do that is that you're trying to jump over these specific uh, bytes, which is in this case, uh, you know, four bytes followed by these two knob instructions, and actually jump into these knob instructions, that's where your sh which is followed by your shell code, and that allows you to, you know, ex ex uh, exploit the structure exception handler. So let's see how this works in uh, in theory. Uh, um, I'm gonna try again to run the RM downloader application. Uh, let's try to go to that address. As I pointed out, this address has basically pop EBX, pop EAX and return. So uh, basically it will return back to this specific instruction which would allow it, you to jump over this specific address and then get to your shellcode. Uh, the shellcode in this case is supposed to be Again, the same classic shell code where uh, I am trying to open up a shell uh, on 5555. So right now, if we try to connect to that, it fails. Let's try using um, our M3U file. Uh, which is called exploit seh.m3u and now it has paused uh, basically if you look in the seh chain you can see that it's pointing to this address 10031179 which means that uh, we have been able to overflow the structured exception handler at that specific pointer with our address and if you look down in stack I'm going to try to jump to that instruction just to show you how it looks in actual stack memory. The address is DC6P0 on the stack. DC6P0. And if you can look over here, as I was saying, um, this pointer to the next SEH record has been overwritten with our jump instructions, um, which, is sick, which is telling it to do an EP0P. Uh, and then jump down, uh, you know, almost 12 bytes to jump up at these knob instruction sets. This is the SE handler, which is where currently our stuff is pointing. Now I'm going to let this um, this exception pass. And actually, if you do that, it will jump as to our breakpoint that says pop EBX, pop EX, and return. Um, if you look at the stat, you can look that this is... Uh, triple zero DC six V zero. This is where uh, if you had identified earlier uh, was the pointer to the next instruction. So we are basically jumping to this memory address uh, and that allows us to basically uh, you know uh, execute the instruction. So I'm going to allow that pop EPX, pop EX, and then return. As you can see, it has returned to 6CB0. Uh, the EIP is pointing to 6CB0, and now it's saying jump short 000 DC6BD, which should make it jump in this knob over here. And that should, there you go, it has jumped to the knob. It's executing, and now if we execute, it basically executes the program, and it's basically running at this point of time. So let's see if the shell has been opened up. And as you can see, the shell is open uh, and we can exploit structure exception handler 
in this manner.